Hello and welcome to the Arsenal Ramble, hosted to you by myself, Dom, and my fellow Gooner, David. This is still a new channel, so we appreciate you tuning in and any feedback will be gladly received, good and bad. So without further ado, let's get right into today's game, Chelsea versus Arsenal. Another 1-0 win to the Arsenal. Sounds familiar, right? Two in a row. So before we get into the match analysis, let's talk about the team sheets. Pretty much the same team as we were all expecting. So Ramsdale in goal, Ben White at right back. We've got Saliba right centre back and we've got Gabriel left centre back. Sinchenko started at left back. And then we have Partey and Xhaka holding. Odegaard just in front. Saka on the right. Jesus up top and Martinelli on the left. The only real talking point was Tierney or Zinchenko for this game. So, Dave, I know you're pretty keen on seeing Tierney starting. Yeah. What were your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much the standard team that we've we've come to see all season, really. Um, the, like, like you just said, the only um, position that was a debating point, really, was left-back. Um, and after the brilliant performance Tierney put in against uh, Zurich, I was... I wouldn't have been surprised if he had started. Um, but having said that, uh, Zinchenko um, does offer you that extra dimension in midfield. Um, so I, I can see why Arteta has gone with Zinchenko. Yeah, and I think we we br- briefly spoke about that on the last podcast, didn't we? About yeah. how uh, I thought maybe Zinchenko was going to start this game and you were hoping that Tini would start this game. Yeah, um, And there was an argument for both. And I, I wouldn't have been upset if Tierney had started this game. Um, and yeah, Zinchenko started. Yeah, no, it's a great position to be in. It's great to see him back. Yeah, it's great it to is great back. to see him back. Yeah. So let's get in to the first half. It was um, a good start by Arsenal. Um, considering we were, the, we were the away team, it, it almost looked as if we were at home, passing it around comfortably. Um, some early chances for Arsenal. Um, yeah, Chelsea struggling to get into the game. What What were your thoughts on on that? Yeah, yeah, I thought we started really brightly today. Um, we put the pressure on quite soon into the half. Chelsea couldn't really get themselves going in this game, and considering they were the home team, yeah, they they really didn't look like the home team at no, all. I think no. we uh, think Jesus had a, a a good chance early on that Silva managed to block. Yeah, um, that was a great block, to be fair. Yeah, and it just shows you the quality of uh, that Brazilian. Brazilian versus Brazilian. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to be honest, we started brightly yeah. and uh, it was all positive at that time. I mean, it shouldn't come to too much of a surprise to uh, Arsenal fans because that's three on the bounce now at Stamford Bridge where um, Arsenal have, have won. Yeah, three um, consecutive seasons winning at Stamford Bridge. Exactly, yeah, that's, that <laughs> is uh, quite an achievement. We um, must be their bogey team. Mm. I think we're a lot of teams bogey team at the minute, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was great to see them sort of take the game by the scruff of the neck and, and really sort of put that fear into Chelsea early on and, yes. and let them know that we're, we're here to play our game and um, the fact that we're the away team yes. ain't going to matter. And there's, yeah. there's all, almost an air of arrogance about Arsenal at the minute where they can go to any team's ground and say, we're going to play our game yeah. how we want to play our game. We're not going to be dictated by the way you play. We're going to set up the way that we want to and we're going to break you down and we're not going to let you get past our line of defence. Yeah, exactly. Um, a little bit later on in the first half, we had um, a brilliant moment um, where we just strung you know, seven or eight really good passes together um, to break that Chelsea press, which resulted in Martinelli getting it out wide and slinging in an almost, well, I would argue, perfect ball in for Jesus. Yeah. And all he needed to do was make some form of contact and that would have been 1-0. Um, <laughs> what are your thoughts on that chance? I think maybe if he had a quiff today, he would have scored that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, was, it was so close. And uh, I think if... Uh, if if he was in a, a good vein of goal scoring form, mm. he puts that away. But yeah. I think he just slightly misjudges it, yeah. and he, he doesn't quite connect with it. But yeah, as you say, anything on that end is in the back of the net. Yeah. But again, it's the it's the story of Jesus at the minute. He just can't seem to score, but he's doing everything else. Yeah. So I think 
I think that's nine games now without a goal. Um, are you worried about that at all? Or um, I'm not worried because no. everything else is bringing to the table. I'd, yeah. I'd rather have him in the squad creating goals than not have him in the squad. Mm. You know, he's he's not scoring, but he's creating, and that's that's definitely good enough for me. Yeah. But yeah, uh, going back to what you're saying about the the quick passing at the back mm. to break through to get that chance, that was unbelievable. Yeah. It, it came from a Chelsea attack. We robbed the ball back. It was two, three, four quick passes around, making little triangles in that the the right back area, and then threw it to Partey in the middle. Mm. Quickly across the other side of the pitch, Martinelli, ball in, chance, should have scored. Yeah, I think had that gone in, that would have been one of those goals that you know you see every year cropping up. Yeah, um, Puskas Award. Yeah, <laughs> it would have, yeah, it was it was such brilliant build up play. It would have been, and it, it just shows you if we're not suffocating teams by having all the possession and uh, uh, stopping them from getting out, we can quickly transition from defence to attack. Yeah, with with the the players that we have on the counter, with Partey on the turn. Martinelli and Saka on both wings. Mm. It's it's just a joy to watch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then and then going from uh, the, the quality there of all the players knowing their roles, uh, a bit of rustiness from Zinchenko on his throw-ins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he's got that Bellerin curse. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what quite happened there. He just... I'm not sure if it slipped out of his hand or he was sort of like caught in two minds almost. But It, um, it was raining quite heavily, yeah. so maybe we could blame it. Given but, the benefit of the doubt. Uh, so, first half performance for from Zinchenko. What were your, your first thoughts of how he played? I think he put in a first half performance that was that sort of echoed a player that hadn't been playing much recently. I, I mean, I, it it wasn't um, he wasn't underperforming by any stretch, but he was a little bit rusty in in certain areas of the game. And I think there was one particular moment where. He sort of headed it back and caused, I think it was Saliba, a few issues um, yeah. around the back post. He didn't um, quite look sharp, did he? Wasn't fully sharp, no. But, I mean, it's sort of to be expected when he's been out for, for so long. Um, only trained, you know, rough, probably a week. Um, yeah. So, you know, but it is great to see him back. And, and I am so glad he is back, especially with Tommy Asu now having... Um, gives a little, us that extra option. The muscular it? injury, yeah. We 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 need to have at least two options out there. Uh, fullback is such a key position. Yeah. So summarising on that first half, we we started great. We came out of the blocks. We stopped Chelsea from really doing anything. Yeah. Aubameyang looked like a myth. He was lost. Wasn't he, he? he was lost. Anything that came into him bounced off. He yeah. didn't really. Turn up at all, did he? Wasn't making runs, half? wasn't pressing. I am no. so glad that he's not in an Arsenal shirt anymore. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what all of my anxiety was from before the game, thinking, oh God, I really hope that Aubameyang mm. doesn't score today. Because watching him, he was stood he was stood in the middle of our half and we had four players, which were at least 20, 30 yards away from mm. him, just passing the ball around him. And he was sidestepping. Yeah. Not yeah. moving towards the ball, not jogging, not doing anything, and then it just reminded me why he's not in the team. I know, yeah, it's it is um, it's great to see, to be honest. <laughs> it's I nice to see someone else, one of our rivals, struggling yeah. with that. Yeah, uh, I really do, don't miss that one bit, and um, you know, I'm, I'm thankful he didn't score against us today because it it kind of felt inevitable at one point that you know he was probably going to. Score a, a penalty or something, something sloppy, something yeah. Sloppy, yeah. It was just, but um, but yeah, it was it was a, a quite a con- contrast on that first half, seeing Aubameyang standing there, and then when we transition to the Chelsea players playing around the back, you see Jesus running one way, you see Saka running the other way, yeah. and they just couldn't get out. They couldn't live with us. No, they they really didn't threaten at all. Um, I think the only way they were scoring in that first half it was, was by set pieces. Um, yeah, and, and they did have a couple as well, didn't they? They had corners, a, a few yeah. corners. And uh, they did get me worried, actually, because it, it did feel like that is one way where they could beat us, even yeah. though we've been really good defending corners this season. We are bigger and stronger than, uh, than, than luckily, though. Um, Saliba and Gabriel um, were colossal at the back, and um, they got on the end of most headers, I would yeah. say. Were you, were you surprised by uh, Chelsea's team sheet that they didn't start with Conor Gallagher? 
I was actually. Um, I think we talked about it in the last pod um, around his pressing ability. Um, yeah. I know in the past he's been new, used to to man mark out players in the game, more specifically Partey, which a lot of our play does go through. Um, and I just had a, an inkling that they would they would start him and, and utilize that tactic, but and thankfully uh, <laughs> they didn't. Um, and Partey. Uh, had a great game. Um, he really was able to to utilise his strengths and, and and act as that deep line playmaker and start off a lot of our good moves. Yeah, he really was good in that first half. So, shall we move on to the second yeah, half? Let's do that. Thank you, Doke. Right. So, we actually start the second half quite sloppily, really. So, it's, uh, it's like what we've been doing quite often this season is we we look really promising first half come out of the second half and we look a bit groggy like like tired and making silly mistakes yeah um i think we we gave away a couple of corners early in the second half yeah. and then uh, we we got to the aspel equator uh challenge on martinelli studs up yeah how did you think that, what do you think about that that was a, a strange one i mean even the the commentators on on bt sport were trying to play it down as if it wasn't even a, a yellow yeah, and I was thinking, you know, it was more of a, a yellow plus, <laughs> um, but, an orange. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think it was a red. <laughs> I don't think it was malicious in any way. Um, no, he didn't mean it, did no. he? But it's that downward force. Yeah, with the studs up, so, which it's it's always in that grey area of is is it a yellow? Is it a yeah? Red? It's almost like a, a scraping uh, motion, and um, he's got to go for it. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, to be fair, it wouldn't be the first time Aspilicueta has done something daft in a, in a Chelsea Arsenal game. I think he did it last season. Uh, <laughs> gave, gave a penalty away right at the death, which uh, Saka gladly converted. But no, um, you know, I think a, a yellow was was fair for that challenge. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. Um, I think there were a, a few coming together with uh, Saka and Cucurella. Mm. Um, mainly. Cucurella tackling Saka yeah. and it's no foul. And then Saka tackling Cucurella yeah. and it's a foul plus yellow card. That was daft by the referee. I think he I think he, he got he basically mixed that one up really, didn't he? I think the Saka one was yeah. um never a foul, never mind a yellow card. No. Um and the and the Cucurella one was a clear foul on Saka. And I, I'm not sure what it is, but Saka just seems to be getting penalised unfairly uh, recently, which is strange considering he's England's golden boy. Yeah, uh, he's an England boy. Yeah. You'd think he'd have the Harry Kane effect. Yeah, he doesn't seem to have that just yet. Um, but um, I think overall, he certainly had the better of Cucurella uh, in this game. Oh, um, and maybe he had some, him on toast. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think some frustrations were to be had by Cucurella. Okay, so we're... Moving on from there, Arsenal had some really smart pressing. Um, Jesus leading the line and then Saka moving in and then Odegaard pushing forward. And we, we strangulated them really to the point where Thiago Silva felt like there was no other option but to uh, try and play out himself. Yeah. And then that's when uh, Jesus came from behind and made a really, really good tackle from behind, got the yeah. ball, uh, fell to Saka, who then played Jesus back in and... He probably should have pulled it back, but he went for the yeah. shot from a from a obscure angle and uh, went out for a corner. Yeah. So, is this Jesus just trying to really trying to score? Yeah, I think it was actually. Um, it it wasn't an easy pass by no means. Um, I think they cut the channels off quite well there. Um, so he's, he's tried to catch Mendy off at his near post, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, I don't think it was going in anyway. I think it was side netting. Um, regardless of the save, but um, well, I'm quite glad that uh, Mendy <laughs> made the save because the subsequent <laughs> corner, yeah, wow, yeah, no, it was a great ball in, uh, it was a quality ball in that um, seemed to evade almost all of the Chelsea players at the same time, sort of taking little deflections. I can't even tell you who it, it hit, really. I think. I think it, it took a nick off just about everyone, yeah. and then Gabriel made absolutely sure of it. Yeah, <laughs> the back stick. <laughs> yeah. Um, at first, I thought it was a, a corner going straight in, um, yeah, straight in the same, goal. But, yeah. but um, I think uh, it needed that touch from Gabriel. Um, so I'm glad he, he did. Oh yeah. If you're on the line, in. you've got to welly that in. 
It's yeah. it's not even the thought process of am I going to steal Saka's exactly, goal? Yeah. You've just got to put it yeah. straight in, haven't you? Yeah. Um, and I, it, I think it would have been a known goal anyway because it yeah. might have come off Mendy. It I think was, you're I think right. it was going wide, came off Mendy, and then it was just making its way in. Exactly. So we might as well get a, a goal for one of our players, not an own <laughs> goal. So yeah, it's a good job he did get a, a foot on that and he just stabbed it into the roof of the net. It was a, it was a, a relief really because we've had better chances in the game and not taking them, um, and we've had a, a set piece and utilised it. And, and to be fair, we, we've not really threatened much from set pieces um, in recent games. Not as much as we used to do, no. uh, especially in the latter parts of last season. Um, so it, it's great to get a set piece goal, actually. I, I'm, I'm chuffed with that one. It really is satisfying to be able to score from set pieces. It's, yeah. it, it, it just brings you a different dimension mm. to your whole game. The game gave off a vibe that it was going to be settled via a set piece, in yeah. my opinion. Um, it was just one of those games... And that's the fine margins of football. Yeah, exactly. So, not long after the goal, uh, Jesus drew in four players as he's running through and then lays it through to Odegaard. And Odegaard has yeah. the opportunity here to make it 2-0, put the game to bed. Yeah. Um, but he decides to cut it back onto his left foot. Yeah. And then by that time, the defender's caught up with him and then he just floats it over the bar. Yeah. Uh, do you think that Odegaard should be more ruthless in his shooting? Or not always try and find the pass or try and be yeah. on his left foot? I think, yeah, that's key, his left foot. I mean, he's a very dominant left-footed player, um, which is fine because that, that's that's just part of his game. He is always on his left foot. But um, had he used his right foot in that situation, um, I think he could have just bent it round Mendy. I mean, he's well off his line trying to, to claim it, which he would, was never getting. Uh I think a, a right-footed player there would just bend it round um, into an empty net almost. Yeah. Um, or even if you just just hit it at the keeper, you can maybe get a little deflection. Yeah. If, you, if you power shot, it can go under, it can bounce off. It was a it was a really rainy day, yeah. so it can skip off the surface. It's just make make the keeper work. Yeah, let them actually try and make a save instead of always cutting back. Because as soon as you cut back, you give them the opportunity to defend. Yeah, he's just that sort of player, isn't he? He's very o Ozil esque. Where um, <laughs> yeah. if it comes off with uh, some of his trickery and, and great passing, no one's batting an eyelid. They're saying how brilliant it is. But when it doesn't happen, and you know he's not shooting, exactly. people are quick to get on his back. But that's just his game. Uh, and I think over the course of the season, um, he's going to add a lot more goals than he did uh, last year. Uh, and I think we're already seeing that. And, and the thing is, I'm being critical of him here, but then at the same time, like. If he goes through on goal and he cuts he cuts it back and then he finds a brilliant pass or he does bend it into the top corner, yeah. I'm not complaining. No, exactly, yeah. yeah. So it's just know, one of them, isn't it? It's just one of those. Yeah. But it was a big chance and to put that game to two nil really would have <laughs> taken it, those nerves away, let's be honest. It, yeah, it um, would have it would have sealed the deal because yeah. uh, what I was just about to say, the next fifteen minutes was pretty much just Chelsea having no joy of playing through us. They were just yeah. lumping the ball forwards to the likes of Sterling, standing at a tall stature of five foot seven next to Saliba. <laughs> yeah, that um, was daft. Yeah, so Chelsea couldn't really find a way through us, could they? In the no, second half. and that, I think, again, that's something we really have improved on um, compared to last season. We we would go 1-0 up in games and almost go a little bit defensive and try and hold on to a game. Yeah. But now we're just... We're we'll going 1-0 up and we're going to still play our game no matter what the scoreline is. And that yeah. works so much more effective. I think last season we used to go 1-0 up and then 70 minutes or so bring on Roberto Holdini himself <laughs> and then try our best to hold on. And it it worked maybe, I'd say, 75% of the time. Yeah. yeah. Whereas now, the only problem with that is you invite pressure onto yourself. If you if you take off, say, a Martin Aliro Saka then you don't have that output. You don't have any threat up top. So then Chelsea in this game, they would be willing to commit more men forward. Yeah. And then we would be under pressure for 20 minutes. But yeah, but yeah. yeah I'm, I'm really glad that we kept to our uh, kept to our game plan, kept them on because they were always a threat. They were, yeah. Even even Saliba was a threat when he turned into Pele on the right wing. Yeah. Did you see that? <laughs> I did, yeah, I was like, why is he up there? But, um, <laughs> is, that, is that what? Yeah, <laughs> he was quite tricky considering he's a six foot four bloke. You know, he's absolutely powering through there. Yeah, I thought he... I wasn't expecting to see him there, but I thought he had a great game overall. He was uh, he was solid at the back and uh, 
really strong where you needed him to be. Yeah. So so not long after that, we had a little penalty shout on Cucurella handball, just outside the box, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, I think in some angles of the replays, it looked in the box. In some angles, it was clearly out of the box. It's but hard I, to tell, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was hard to tell, but I think they probably got the, the right decision. Had that been the other way around, I think you'd be fuming, you'd be fuming yeah. if that was given. And um, so, VAR obviously looked at it, but it was... Um, you know, it wasn't going to be a penalty. It was deemed a free kick, uh, mm-hmm. or sorry, deemed outside the box. Therefore, it would have been a free kick, which VAR cannot bring it back for. So, yeah. game, the game continued. Um, but I think the right decision was made there. It would be interesting if we had some kind of Hawkeye, like they have in tennis, like <laughs> yeah. an aerial view Hawkeye to see yeah. exactly whereabouts it is. Because it's, it's a bit of a grey area because when it's a foul, Mm. It's wherever the player is stood when you commit the foul. But yeah. when it's a handball, it's wherever the ball strikes the hand in relative to where they are on the pitch. Yeah. So they could be stood in the box, but their arm's outside of the box, and mm. then they handball it, and it counts as a free kick. Exactly. Which yeah. I think is what happened today. Yeah, there's no doubt, though, that that would have been a penalty had it been in the box. So, yeah, uh, his arm is in a unnatural position. Uh, yeah. And I think he purposely did that. Uh, so he. Yeah, they definitely got away with one there, that's for sure. Yeah. So, after that, I think uh, Chelsea put a bit of pressure on us, really. And um, having not scored a second goal, we we kind of... We mm. do this to ourselves quite often, don't we? we? We leave a team with one goal in it, and then any time they get forward, the nerves creep in. Yeah. And uh, about 80 minutes, it's 1-0, and you're thinking, oh, God. Yeah. No, n- nerves did creep in, I think. And I think that's why the substitution for... Tierney um, for, for Zinchenko was, was a clever one. Yes. Um, he did seem to shore up that left-hand side a little bit. Um, yeah, obviously... I, th- I think um, not long before Zinchenko went off, he he made a couple of mistakes. He, he had that slip on the left-hand side where yeah. where Chelsea broken uh, could have had a chance from. Exactly, yeah. I think that's that's just him being a bit rusty, really. But that, he should iron that out when he gets back to oh, full yeah. fitness. Yeah, there's no doubt. But I, I think he, that was the right call to make at, at the right time. And yeah. I have been critical of Arteta's substitutions in, in this season. Um, but I think he made the right calls today. Um, and that did seem to take off um, the pressure um, that Chelsea were, were trying to put onto Arsenal. Um it helps us get back into our passing rhythm um, and co- control the game a bit more. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, and then he brought Tierney on and uh, definitely assured up that left hand side. Yeah. What about the um, Abamyang being subbed off almost <laughs> instantly after the goal? Uh, what were your thoughts Just on that? Adds insult to injury for yeah. him, really, isn't it? He, yeah. he plays against his old team. He had that. Really interesting press conference thing that got leaked before the game. Did you see oh, that? Yeah. Where I'm a blue. I'm here now. I'm back. I'm blue. <laughs> I'm blue. <laughs> and you're still pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, that was hilarious. I, I, I do. I used to really love Aubameyang when he played for Arsenal, but he's not the player that he used to be. He's not as quick. He's not as lethal in front of goal. And I think we parted ways with him just at the right time. Yeah. And he is a bit of a a prima donna and influences the changing room. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, I've been, I've been quite um, confused by the the warm welcome pundits have given Aubameyang on his return to the Premier League. Um, a lot of them seem to still give him a lot of praise for being this goal scoring machine, uh, and all, you know that. He was what that player at one point in time, but we're talking three plus years ago now. Yeah, um, and he's he's what thirty three now. 32, yeah, thirty three. Yeah. He's, he's not he's not got that pace anymore. He's not really yeah. looked that lethal in front of goal for Chelsea. I've even seen Chelsea fans referring to him as breaking that curse of the number nine that they seem to refer to all the time. You know, um, <laughs> I don't think he's broke that at all. I think he's just added to that curse. That's another number nine that is <laughs> not scoring goals and. And not really helping the team in any other way either. Um, so to see him sulk off and sit on the bench, you know, that, that really yeah. puts the cherry on top for me. Oh, yeah. See, see him sat on the bench looking Mardi yeah. after we've gone 1 0 up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> happy to see that. Yeah. And then uh, not long after that, we saw Granit Xhaka winding up all the Chelsea players. Uh, I yeah. think it was Trevor Shalaba. 
yeah, yeah. on the left hand side. <laughs> right at the death of the game, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um I think the game was pretty much done and dusted by that point and um bit of time wasting from Xhaka. Uh, yeah, a bit of time wasting, probably just trying to get into their heads mentally. Um he didn't do anything wrong. Uh he didn't get the booking or anything like that. He would just well, he, of... he kicked the ball away, didn't he? Yeah. yeah but, Xhaka, um but then... Yeah, on another day you probably could get booked for that to be fair. Um but I think with the afters with Chalaber, he was almost just sort of getting in his way just to to irritate him almost. <laughs> and the little grin on his face. I, I do like that, to be fair. I, I do I like love seeing that. The little dark arts. Yeah. Um, it's just when Xhaka does it, it adds that extra, don't get a red card. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the street smarts that we've not had in the last few years in this Arsenal team. Yes. No, I am seeing a lot more of that, actually. Um, the, the street smarts of the, in the game. Um, even down to little... Little pauses in game in the game for team talks and things like that. We know, we know Arteta likes his little team talks. Yeah. And any opportunity he can get, like you, you'll see uh, Saka go down, and yeah. then everyone will immediately rush to the to the touchline to Arteta, and he's doing a little drinks break yeah. and a team talk. And he'll never admit it, but there's no doubt in my mind that some of those are orchestrated. Um, oh, absolutely, th- there's some absolutely. little little false. Uh, pretend injuries almost on the pitch just just so we can get some words in which you know we need to be doing these things if we want to if we want to get that extra little edge in, in games and um you know I'm, I'm glad we're starting to be a bit more ruthless with things like that yeah so that pretty much rounds off the game itself yeah, yeah. Uh, and the, the big events that happened in the game and uh, puts us 13 points clear of wow. Chelsea in the league uh, back to top of the league well wow. it is amazing isn't it um this has been since, ever since I've been an Arsenal fan, uh, this has been the best start we've ever had. I think it even outrivals the uh, the Invincible season, doesn't it? it? It beats that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we've uh, had more points from the start of this season than yeah. we did in that season. Yeah. But they didn't have a, a beast of a team like Man City chasing them. Though. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we can only do what we can do. Uh, focus on ourselves. We've got to focus on ourselves, keep pushing. Um, another thing that I'm really glad about is... The fact that we had a little slip up, slip up against Southampton, we dropped points, um, but it's not affected us. We've we've come back and we've beat Chelsea away. Yeah. Um, in pre- last season, for example, we went on a, a three or four game losing streak, um, and then we'd win a few games, and then we'd have another losing streak, and it seemed like losing games or dropping points would really affect us mentally and compound yeah. into further points dropped. Yeah. Um, this season, we're not seeing that. We drop points against United, we bounce back and we win. Drop points against Southampton, we're now bouncing back and beating Chelsea. Yeah, it's a team with a point to prove, isn't it? Every time we drop points, we we bounce straight back, and it's it's just amazing to see. Yep, yeah. uh, I think that rounds off the uh, the match analysis perfectly. Um, so we're going to have a little break now, um, and we're going to come back, and then we're going to talk about who we think was the man of the match player ratings, and then predicted team for the Brighton game midweek. Thank you for joining us for the second part of the pod. We're now going to be going into the player ratings and also our man of the match. So, let's start off with um, Ramsdale in goal. Uh, your thoughts on his performance, Dom? Ramsdale and goal. He, he didn't really have much to no, do today. He didn't, did he? he? He. I think the main thing that we can talk about with Ramsdale today was his distribution. His his passing was was great. He he didn't really make any mistakes from a passing point of view. No. Um, but no, he didn't really have many saves to make. No, no, he didn't uh, at all. To be honest, I mean, I think he came out and collected some some good. Crosses and corners and things like that. I mean, I, I think he things com- you'd expect him yeah, to do. Yeah. Commanded his box well, um, and that is something that I think is an area of improvement f- that he can make. So it is good to see that that was a, a plus for him in this game. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, if he if he comes out and he's a bit flappy, or if he tries to punch the ball and doesn't yes, get near it, then we'd be it. talking about how how he's not doing that. But yeah, he he was pretty solid today. So I, I'd give him a. Uh, I'd give him a 7.5 for today's performance. Yeah, I'm going to give him a 7 um, only because I just don't think he had much to do, which is just a testament to, to the, <laughs> the defence, yeah. you know, really. Um, and, well, that's the whole team, to be honest. Um, so I'm going to give him a 7. 
Okay. Okay, uh, let's go to Ben White. Um, I think he had a, a solid game. A he was really, really good. Yeah. A really, really solid game. And it's not the first time we've seen that uh, or said that. Um, he's he's so consistent with his performances. Um, and at the start of the season, I never would have really thought about Ben White at right back. It was it was always Tommy <laughs> Asu in my mind that he was going to be our number one right back. And to, to see him putting in these displays at right back, week in, week out, at this level, it's just there's there's no way he's not going to be on the plane um, for the World <laughs> Cup. There's just there's no way. Um, you hear that, Gareth? Get him on the <laughs> plane. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. And when you first saw White at the start of the season at right back, you thought <laughs> he's filling in here because yeah. Tommy Asu's out injured, and Tommy Asu was unbelievable last season at right back. Yeah. He, he was a monster there. So for White to keep him out of the team and just hold that position down, it's just a testament to how good he's been. And it's not even just defensively. There's so many times today that he was linking up, linking up with Odegaard and yeah. Saka, yeah, he was. storming down the right-hand side, mm. pulling crosses back. Mm. He's great in the air. He's great yeah. with his feet. He's fast. He's strong. Literally he's got everything. Just, he's such a great fullback. Cool. And I think that this will be his, his final position. I think fullback... He can fill in at centre back, but mm. I do think as a, as a right back, he is he's really good. Yeah, I remember during the um, Amazon um, All or Nothing series, um, one of the coaches at Arsenal uh, pulled him to one side and had a little discussion with him, and was telling him how um, he's got the ability to be world class. And I, at the time, I remember thinking, are mm. they just sort of uh, blowing smoke up there, um, or? You know, do they genuinely believe that? And now, I actually genuinely do believe that um, he has got the ability to be a, a world class right back, yeah, and and centre back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's just he's just so calm and cool on the yeah. ball. He, he always makes the right decision. He always makes the right pass. Yeah, he, he's he's not faced by anything. He, he he's not really outpaced by anyone either. No, but specifically in this game, I think he made some really good blocks. Um, some really good runs and, and was just overall just really solid. So I, I'm going to give him an eight uh, for this game. Yeah, his football intelligence is great. I think there was a, a time where Chelsea were breaking down the right and uh, they, they eventually put a ball into the box. But you saw about 10, 15 seconds before the ball even comes in, you see him switch on and break a neck to get back and he gets it just in front of their left wing. And puts the ball out for a corner. Yeah. And you think if he's not that switch on, then the ball falls to their attacker and it goes in. So yeah, yeah, I'd give him, I'd give him an eight as well. Okay. Great performance. Brill. Uh, moving on to Saliba. Um, I think, I think he had an absolutely solid game. He was strong. He was fast. There was, he wasn't giving their players a sniff. Um, no. I mean, we we mentioned it earlier, but they were they were trying to sling balls into. Sterling versus <laughs> Saliba, and I just felt bad for Sterling. I was like, you've literally got no chance. Um, no, he needs a step ladder, doesn't yeah. he? But um, yeah, Saliba, and it's not the fact that he's so big; he's so mobile. There's a few chances where um, was it Havertz who who was played through, yeah. and he was actually offside when he was played through. Yeah, Saliba was five yards behind him and ended up beating him Catching to the ball, him. Yeah. muscling him off, and yeah. then just calmly playing it back to Ramsdale or calmly yeah. playing it out to. The, Left back uh, Zinchenko. He he really is a Rolls Royce of a defender. And uh, for all the debate before he came back to Arsenal of should we should we have him back? Should we try and sell him on for a bit more? Yeah. Uh, is this kid ready to play for Arsenal? He's absolutely ready. Yeah. I'm going off a bit of a tangent here, but the, the, there's rumours that verbal contract um, talks have taken place uh, with Saliba, and, and they're looking promising. And if that is true. Um, then that would be a real, a real, you know, yeah. statement because he is. You've a got to tie him down, haven't you? you oh. You've got to do everything within your arsenal, so to speak, to try and <laughs> to keep him at the club because yeah. he's 21 years old. He's probably, I'd say, at the minute, top one of the top five centre backs in the league. Yeah, uh, for a 21 year old, which is unbelievable. No, yeah. If we can keep him at the club and and put him on a lengthy contract, so he's not tempted by like a PSG or a Real Madrid. And, mm. and even if they do want to uh, try and get him in their squad, 
It's going to cost them. Yeah, it'll have to cost them a lot of money, won't it? It would, If we turn him down. And even if he does stay here for five years, he'll only be 26. Yeah. And then he he can move on as he wishes, or hopefully stay with us for the rest of his career. Yeah, hopefully. Fingers crossed. But yeah, I I would... uh, What what were you rating him out of 10? Well, for me... um, and I've probably jumped the gun a little bit on on my man man of the match prediction, uh, but he is that he is the man of the match for me. Uh, yeah. I think he was just absolutely solid at the back and and really just helped give that confidence to the rest of the team, and that ultimately gave us the win. Um, so for me, I'm, I'm giving him a nine. Um, yeah, I, I completely agree that he didn't put a foot wrong today. In fact, I think he he did make one tiny mistake which was a comedy of errors at the back where I think one of our players I think it was Gabriel he he headed it backwards and then Zinchenko played it across the box to Saliba yeah. and then Saliba miss kicks it yeah. and then it falls to uh falls to Aubameyang who almost yeah. uh, had a shot on goal and that was his only mistake of the whole game but yeah. no, no player is without mistakes and as no. long as he has few and far between then I'm happy with that, but but overall he was a colossus at the back. Yeah, and even that pass to him there was was pretty unexpected for him. I yeah, mean, it was a know, hospital it, pass. It wasn't, wasn't it? it wasn't great for any defender to deal with. So, you know, um, yeah, um, yeah. So so you give him a nine. I think I'd give him a nine as well, and my man of the match. Okay, Brill. So we're in agreement with that. Gabriel to the left of him. Um, I think again he's had another brilliant game. Um, very similar to Saliba in a way. He was just really airily dominant um, and helped stop these crosses that Chelsea were trying to put in our box. And and that really was one of their only game plans um, to, to, a, to a point, to a degree. I, I don't know why, because they haven't got particularly tall players. Um, well, they just couldn't really get into our box, could no. they, any other way? So No. But yeah, to see those two, Saliba and Gabriel, it must be so intimidating for any centre forward that's trying to get anything aerially. Yeah. You've got no chance, have you? No, to think, you know, Gabriel's 24, I believe, Saliba's 21. That partnership is already very, very strong. Um, and it's in its early evolution, isn't yeah, it? So it's in its early days and it's only going to get better. And it's just, it's frightening, actually, to think how good those two could become. It, it reminds me of Ferdinand Vidic levels of of a partnership at the back. Oh, um, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I'm really chuffed for, for Gabriel in this game. I think he played brilliant. And, and like we said in previous pods, he has had a mistake in him every now and again. And, and you know, we didn't see one of those today. No, so Apart um, from the little the little backwards header that he made. But, yeah. but you know, it's, it's going to happen. Yeah. I, I, uh, I would have Gabriel as my honourable mention as... He was almost a uh, man of the match for me. Yeah. And it was between him and Saliba. And mm. he almost edged it for me because he actually got the goal, which, you know, changed the game. But he didn't do a lot for that. He was just there at the time. Yeah. But with how good uh, Saliba was, I, That's I a good couldn't point. not give it to him. It's a good point. He scored the goal. We've not even I've not even mentioned that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. he, he was the one that scored the goal to, to make Arsenal win. So yeah, it, it It just shows you how good his defensive performance yeah. was that you didn't even mention exactly. him scoring the goal. Yeah. So what would you rate him out of 10? I'll give him a, an 8.5. Yeah, I think they, they were very similar, him and Saliba, but Saliba just edges it, edges it for me. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think I'll give him an 8.5 as well. Okay, brilliant. Uh, moving on to Zinchenko, uh, left back. Zinchenko, I, I'm really glad to see him back in the team. It, it I think we, we've struggled a little bit with uh, the structure of how Arteta wants to play whilst he's been out of the team and having to change between Tierney and Tommy Asu on between midweek and at the weekend I think the the consistency was affected and it's, it's really good to see Zinchenko back in the team mm. however that being said I don't think this was his best game it was a bit rusty wasn't it yeah. we touched on it earlier in, in the pod but he was a little bit rusty but it's to be expected he's been out for so yeah. long you know um, I'm, I'm just glad to see him back in an Arsenal shirt and um he does offer us an extra extra dimension in midfield. Uh, so, um wasn't his best game, no, no but I think it wasn't his worst either. The thing that you expect with Zinchenko is technical quality. And mm. 
And on the ball today, he had a few misplaced passes. Yeah. He, he did, had a few slips, things that you wouldn't usually expect from him. So yeah, I think it's that. Yeah. You know, that's rustiness, and so for that, I'd probably give him a, a six point five. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, six point five, six. Yeah, um, that definitely um, can be improved upon in, in in future games. And sure, he will be. Yeah, without a doubt. Okay, uh, moving on to the midfield. Uh, Granite Xhaka, how, how would you rate his performance today? We've got Granite <laughs> Xhaka, guys. Oh, I'm really liking this guy. Uh, he's had his bad moments in an Arsenal shirt, but recently he's just. He, I can't describe how good this guy is. Mm. It, he's so assured in midfield. He, he's physical, his passing is quality. He, he seems to be making the right decisions and making the right runs now. Yeah. Um, he didn't have as many chances uh, going through on goal as no. he has done in recent weeks. No. But I feel like he, they, uh, Arteta wanted him to be partnering Partey in the yeah. midfield a bit more today so we didn't get overrun. Yeah, I think that's spot on. Um, I think typically against the, le- the lesser teams, if you will, um, he would be making more marauding runs. Mm. Um, he did make a few today, but I think... In the back of his mind, he knew that one of the only ways Chelsea were going to score was was a counter attack. Um, so to shore up that midfield, you know, he was clever, uh, probably you know, tactical um, decision uh, pre game. But um, he drew just, in so many fouls in he the did, midfield. Yeah. He, he, yeah. he was uh, he was really good. Yeah, to he, stop them from transitioning and uh, attacking us. Yeah, he used his body well. He was he was savvy. Uh, he was winding up their players. Um, yeah, it was at the end of the game. So yeah, game and there, and but... usually we used to the reverse with Granit Xhaka. We used to other players winding him up and him getting sent off. Yeah. So it's great to see that he's ironed that out of his game. I mean, he's finally matured at what thirty years of age, <laughs> <laughs> like a fine wine. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, he's he's taken that out of his game and he played really well alongside Partey today. Yeah. I think he, particularly first half, he worked it into Odegaard really quickly and then Odegaard did what Odegaard does and brings it up the pitch mm. but um, yeah yeah, I, I'd give uh, Jacare 8 today Right okay I'm going to give him a 7 I mean I, th- I think he's he's had um, better games but I, I don't think he, he put a foot wrong um, it was just a, a more quieter game but that was more tactically um, based um, so I'm going to give him a 7 Okay, okay um, Moving on to Partey um, I personally think Partey had a cracking game, and he is my honourable mention for, um, for for man of the match. Um, yeah, I, I think he dominated the midfield um, on his own, as he does, um, and was really picking some key passes. And that one particular play, um, which resulted in in the Jesus missed header uh, from the Martinelli cross, where we we you know, broke out from the back with a, about a string of 10 really, really quick key passes. I think he was instrumental in that as well. Um, I think, yeah, he had a, he had a br- brilliant game. And um, Yeah, part part it was, he was so good today. It, it, it's the trust that our centre-backs can give to him that they know they'll give him the ball. And even if he's being pressed by four players, he'll turn and he'll pass. He'll make the right pass. Yeah. Perfect way to pass. He, he's such a good player. Yeah. And you can tell with the drop-off in our team when we play midweek against teams like Zurich when we start with Lekonga or start with uh, El Nani. They, they really are not as good as this guy. No. I'm so no. glad that he's in our team. No, um, he's key. The only mistake, really, that he made was taking it off of Martinelli's head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, the ball I, came in. They need to be a bit clearer, don't they, with their communication on that one. I think uh, Martinelli should have called for it louder. Uh, it's hard to, to, to see. Um, it's hard to criticise that because he's got to go for it. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think he had a really solid game and I'm going to give him um, an 8.5. Yeah, 8.5 for me as well. Okay, brilliant. Um, and Odegaard, the, the, um, the captain for today, uh, what would you rate him? So for Odegaard, I would rate him... It's a shame that I can't rate him on each half. Because yeah. at first half, he came out of the blocks. He was bright. He was creating. He was uh, he was everywhere, pressing. 
Um, and second half, it seemed like his decision making wasn't as good as it was first half. Mm. And he obviously scuffed that chance, which he yeah. should have put to bed. Um, so if I was going to rate it on halves, I'd probably give him an 8.5 for the first half mm. and a 7 for the second half. Mm. So for me, I'd have to go in between and I'll, I'll give him a 7.5 overall yeah. just for his his overall uh, effort. Yeah, I think I agree with, with that. He, he, he was the glue at times with our creative chances. Um, but then there were certain moments in the game where you know, he's, he's wasted chances and he wasn't quite fine in the passes. But um, He tends to run out of steam, doesn't he? he he's definitely like a 70-minute player. Because as soon as he gets past that, um, I think he came off 65 minutes, didn't he? Yeah. When he gets to that stage, it's like he starts to run out of steam because he just runs and runs yeah. and runs so much in the first half. I think statistically, he does run more um, kilometres uh, than any player in our team, so yeah. <laughs> you know, I guess it's understandable. There's, there's no surprise um, that he does um, run out of energy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, you know, it wasn't his best game, but by no means least, it wasn't his worst either. So I think we're we're fair on that um, rating. Yeah, um, Martinelli on the left had a good game. I thought he uh, he's very tenacious on the left. He's uh, I think. Right at the very start, he got played in and he uh, absolutely burnt the right back. Yeah. And then from then on, he was like, right, I know, I can beat you <laughs> Yeah. every time. Uh, and he, he played that ball in, which uh, Jesus should have put in the back of the net. Mm. Uh, that was on a plate. Uh, I think Martinelli did everything that he could do, really, today, apart from score. Yeah. I mean, when I saw the team sheets um, and I saw that he was coming up against Aspilicueta, I did think that that was going to be a bit of a mismatch, and yeah. it was going to he was going to cause him more problems. Um, he did to a degree, um, but not as much as I thought he would. Um, yeah, for first half he looked menacing, mm. but then yeah, not not quite as menacing second half. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of our play came quite centrally uh, in the games. So out on on the wings, it. it they were a little quieter than normal, I would say. Um, so yeah. it, it didn't have... Um, However, I do think that Saka may have had the better of Cucurella on the wings. but <laughs> That's true. Yeah, he yeah he didn't give him an easy game. Um, um, so for Martinelli, I'd, I'd give him a seven today. He, yeah. he, he played well, but he didn't really influence the game in, in a literal standpoint. No, yeah, I agree. Seven, seven for Martinelli. So... Briefly touched on Saka there. Um, I think, yeah, you're right. He did. He did have um, Cucurella, um on on the right hand side. Um, considering they're both really fast players, I think he did sort of get runs in behind him a fair bit. But um, you know, he didn't create a whole heap in this game, Saka. Um, no. Apart from the goal, the goal, uh, <laughs> which was yeah. a great corner, to be fair. Yeah, um, I th- to be honest, if you put it into those areas, then any little nick from anyone is going to go in. Mm. And if anyone, I, don't, I think if nobody touched it, it probably would go in as well. Mm. So, yeah, really yeah. good delivery. But it, he, he didn't create an awful lot during the game. No, yeah, he didn't. Okay, I'm going to give Saka a 7.5. Yeah, 7.5 for me as, uh, as well. Okay, uh, and last but no means least, we've got Jesus up top. What do you rate his performance? Jesus, for me, he, he's a mixed bag because he's such a great player and he he uses his body so well. He draws in fouls. He's, his all-round play is unbelievable, but he just cannot seem to score. No. No, <laughs> Which... A- you know, he's there to do that, but he is there to, you know, create goals as well. So mm. he was a real chaotic problem for Chelsea, I would say, all game. You know, he's using his strength really well again. And um, although he hasn't scored again or contributed assist or anything like that, he he was causing them problems. Yeah. Um, and if you compare it to Aubameyang's performance for them, you know, it's night and day. You know, exactly. Yeah. At least he has an effect on the game, um, and yeah, f- for me, um, you know, if, if it had just bagged that goal, for that header, um, yeah. would be saying what what a performance from Jesus. Um, probably would have got man of the match. 
Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. But you know, it, it's the fine margins, like you said earlier. Um, so, but for me overall, you know, I'm going to give him a seven point five. I, I still think he had a real, a really good game. Yeah, and, and I think he was unlucky in the first half when he he received the ball, he sat down Trevor Shalaba, and but for a really good Thiago Silva block, he probably would have been nestling that in the back of the net as well. Yeah, he's he's always in the right positions, and he will score eventually. Mm. So I, I, I'm going to give him an eight for today's performance because I don't think we could have we we couldn't have scored. The, the the corner came from him pressing Thiago Silva, winning the ball back, and then getting the corner. Yeah. So yeah, we couldn't have point. scored without his effort from a pressing perspective. So for me, I'm going to give him an eight. Okay, brilliant. That rounds off the player ratings for today. Um, so now we're going to quickly um, go into a predicted team now for the game against Brighton midweek. Um, it's a League Cup game, so. Maybe rotation, maybe not. Who knows? It's a Premier League team. Um, let's start with you, Dom. Um, predicted team for the Brighton game. So my predicted team for the Brighton game is I'm going to have Ramsdale in net, just because I don't think we have any other option at the minute. No. Um, I'm going to start with White at right back, um, just for that bit of consistency and uh, experience. I'm going to have Holding... And I'm going to have Saliba as centre backs. Yeah. Uh, holding because I feel like he should play in every cup competition that we've got just to keep the minutes there and yeah. rotate one of Gabriel or Saliba. Um, and that's why I have Saliba in as well because he didn't play on Thursday against Zurich, but Gabriel did. So yeah, that's a good point. Just to <clears throat> keep them rotated and fresh. Yeah. Tierney will be starting for me at left back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he didn't start this game. He's been playing all the cup competitions. He's been playing them well. And um, yeah, I don't think Zinchenko's quite ready to start two games in a week. So yeah. for me, Tierney is the only option. Yeah. Then go to the midfield. I'm playing El Neni and Laconga. I feel like they played well against Zurich. They didn't do anything too magnificent, but they weren't awful either. No. And if they're going to get any chance, it's in this game. Mm. They're not going to play in the Premier League for me unless it's to rotate or to see out games. So I would start with those two. Yeah. With with the mind of maybe bringing on uh, Partey if if it's going a bit pear shaped later on. Um. Now I'd actually start Odegaard in this uh, in front of Fabio Vieira for me, just because I feel like we need our captain on the pitch. Vieira's the last few times that Vieira started, he's just not been creative enough he's looked lacklustre on the pitch yeah um so yeah i feel like we need a bit of experience and we need a bit of creativity so i'm starting odegaard yeah then i'm gonna have nelson on the right wing he needs another chance saka needs a rest it's you know it's an, it's an easy easy decision for me for that yeah um martinelli on the left wing because I feel like if you don't have Saka, you need Martinelli. Yeah. Or you don't have Martinelli, you need Saka. Yeah. You need one of the two to yeah. continue having that threat. Because if we were, if we were to start like we did at the uh, the last game midweek with Inketia on the wing and mm. Jesus up top, it's just not effective enough. No. Okay. So Martinelli on the left wing, and then I would start up top with Inketia. Yeah. Because he's a cup cup striker, getting a few goals, fox in the box. Mm. That would be my team. What about you? I think I pretty much agree with all of those decisions. Um, the only caveats are, you know, if Turner is back mm. and can play, I would play him because he, he has been doing well recently up until his injury. I'm really not sure on, on his injury status, to be honest. Um, so, you know, depending on the severity, you know, I would play um, Turner if he's fit. If not, then obviously we haven't really got much choice. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Vieira one's an interesting one because I, I agree with you he has underperformed recently but at the same time we need to give him minutes to be able to um, for him to be able to prove himself Yeah. so it, it's a tough one because yeah Odegaard without a doubt for me would, would be more beneficial in this game but at the same time how else are we going to get minutes into Vieira if he can't play the first round of the Carabao Cup. Yeah. So for me, I would play Vieira. Um, having said that, you know, 
Odegaard would be on the bench and he would be ready to come on for him. Um, the World Cup's coming up. We know there's going to be a big break. Norway aren't going to the World Cup. We know that Odegaard's going to have a, a big rest um, soon. So maybe that's going to be um, in Arteta's mind, you know. So maybe he will play Odegaard. And, and I, I, I don't think I would um, have a problem with it if he did. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I would be worried for Vieira, uh, thinking, you know, he can't even get minutes in the League Cup. Um, but I'm hopeful that he does play, he does play well, because the last few games he's played or, or came on in games have been underwhelming. Um, up top, yeah, I would definitely stick with um, Nelson. Um, I think he had, a, obviously, a really great um, substitute appearance against Forrest, where he bagged two goals and an assist. I think he played pretty well um, against... Um, Zurich. Mm. I think he did play well. He was one of our better players on the day. We didn't really play that well in the game, but he was one of the few players that actually could come out with a, an honourable mention. So I would certainly um, stick with Nelson. Eddie, yeah, he needs minutes. He needs to to get back into form because he is also another player for me that has dipped in form. But he has been played out on the on the wings, and you know that's just not his natural position. So we need to get him back centrally. And I do think with Eddie, you need him as up to speed as possible because yeah. if for whatever reason Jesus falls out of the team, if he's injured, we have no other option. Yeah. So yeah. you've got to get him get him in the team, get him scoring, so then he's ready to go. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that rounds up the predicted teams for Chel- uh, for Brighton Sorry, midweek. Um, me and Dom will actually be at the game, um, so we're both very much looking forward to that one. Um, and that rounds off the pod. So, um, just a reminder that this is a new channel. This is a new podcast. Um, so we really do appreciate you um, tuning in. And as we keep mentioning, if you've got any feedback or any um, constructive criticism, we will gladly receive it because we really do want to improve. So, thank you for listening. Take care. Take care.